Like for real? All right. Tell me when we are live. Okay, so. Okay, and we are going in three, I don't have a trace number. two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Great Lakes Adventist Academy Alumni Weekend Lady Warriors Basketball Game. For those of you that don't know, every year the Warriors basketball team is selected and attend practice multiple times a week leading up to tonight. As for the alumni, which are past and graduated students, they have almost no time to prepare. Oftentimes, they don't know who will be playing until the night of. Their goal, take down the Warriors. I'm excited to see who's going to come out sitting on the throne. Before we get started, I'd like to introduce my co-announcer. Oh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the game. As our Noah Moody has said, I am Dean Warren. I am former Lady Warriors ladies head coach, and, gentlemen, and we I'm have excited to, to be here seats. and uh, be here for this moment. Um, and we are about to have and the singing to to their of the national benches. anthem, we'll get and then the game will get underway. It's going to be a great evening. I have the Lady War I have the alumni Lady Warriors coming out on top in this first game. I'm going to have to agree with you on that one, Dean Warren, but. Unfortunately for the controversy of the stream, I will have to say our own team, the Lady Warriors, will come out on top. So, I'd also like to acknowledge our men on the floor, Trey Slickers, and our multiple camera operators and AV team, Alex Winkler, Owen Kroll, Aiden Kukowski, Luke Leto. So, who of the yeah. alumni have you seen on the court so far practicing? You know, those Alex. white and green jerseys. Dean Warren. Just bear with us for one second, ladies and gentlemen. We are having some technical how difficulties. How many did you repeat that? Could you repeat that, please? Ladies and gentlemen, if you would please stand for the national anthem. Okay, and as we prepare for the national anthem to be sung, I would like to acknowledge multiple people. As I've said, we have Sung Moon on the camera, Owen Cole oh, on the camera, and here it starts. Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy. See by the dawn's early light, what so Twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gay. Bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangled banner yet Officially underway. The games can now commence. That was a wonderful rendition of our national anthem by, I believe, Sela Garcia and Shania Mamaringbe. Yes, uh, they are two of our student leaders here on campus. We have the head ladies RA, and then we also have ladies the Ladies and gentlemen, please SA join me in pastor. welcoming our alumni ball SA, players, starting with number just 10, like this that Morgan Stahl. Later in the year. 
And they are now announcing the players. The first one for Lady Warriors alumni is Morgan Stahl at number 10. Number 11, Stephanie Martinez. Number 11, Stephanie Martinez. I believe these were both. Number 44, last Ellen Council. And then we have Ellen Council. Now, she was part of the years Number that 62, didn't actually Ella have Warriors for a long time because of COVID, but she is now rejoining us. And after Ellen, we have Ella Pittman. Number 23, Aaliyah Vanderwall. Number 23, we have Aaliyah Vanderwall. She's definitely going to be a big Number hitter on 12, the tonight, don't you Sophia think? Sophia Hall. I think she is a big hitter, but also Number 12, Sophia Hall. Looking at these number these 31, young Ava here, Stevenson. Lots of these were on the Warriors last year and in the past. So it's a good looking team. And number 61, I agree. Mrs. Pittman. Mrs. Pittman. This is going to be a wonderful game if she can play. It's time to welcome the Lady play. Warriors. If you would join us if along the blue possible, curtain, it's, it's time be for the tunnel. Early night. And now they are going to announce the current Come on, Gloss students, you know the drill. And as we can see, the crowd is starting to come down off the stands. What do you think is happening, Dean Warren? This is a tradition of sorts. I'm, I'm not exactly familiar with the uh, official name of it. It's a tradition in which they run through the tunnel, welcoming them on to the court as only Glock can do. Of course, and as they storm onto the court, who do you think is going to come out first? We do can do better than that. Captain? Leave your seats, folks. I, I don't know. Is the captain first or is the captain last? I don't know because there's actually two captains on the hmm. Lady Warriors team this year. And more people are slowly trickling down from the stands to make this tunnel longer. And I can't wait to see. I cer certainly hope they can make the turn at the end because they they have to make at the turn forward, so that they can seven, go and shake everyone. Cora down. Hall. And I believe our first player to be announced is Cora Hall, who was on last year's Lady Warriors as well. Also at forward, number twenty-four, Elena Panuncia. Number twenty-four, Elena Panuncia. She is actually one of the first-year Warriors. Tried out first time this year. At shooting so guard, far. number 13, Emily Lucas. And at number 13, we have Emily Lucas, a first year warrior, but a sophomore. She has told me that she will be shooting very guard, number 14, yes. Aaliyah Mosley. Number 14, we have Aaliyah Mosley. Once again, another first year lady warrior. So far, the team has looked like it's been only... Number 20, at point guard, Robert Lucia Heilig! Next up, we have Lucia Heilig, who is a second-year warrior. She made Lady Warriors in her first year as a and freshman, now and now she's starters, returning for number a second-year campaign. Forward, Miranda, Miranda LaRona! And next, running down the tunnel through the crowd is Miranda LaRona. I have not seen her. Number nine at Ford, Salma Okongo. And who is this running down the tunnel? Number Here's 22, Salma. shooting guard, Lavanya Juma. And next up at shooting guard, we have Lavanya Juma. This is a, another first year Lady Warrior. There seem to be a lot of those. Number players. three, captain, point guard, Shelby Berquist. One of the captains and the point guard, Shelby Berquist. I believe you saw her speak earlier tonight. Also captain and number 23, forward, Naome Asibue. And this year's main captain, number what do you think, 24, 23? And let's hear it for their coach, now Pastor now. Jeff Ackenberger. And as the crowd walks off of the court, the games can finally begin. Mr. Moody, if uh, you notice that a lot of them... And a special a thank you to our referees tonight, Warriors. Mike Myers well, and Randy Reese. the entire starting lineup from last year's Lady Warriors game graduated. So they're only left a few Ladies players and gentlemen, to make their return. Before we this play season. this game, that is true. Let's and take I've an opportunity to pray. Please bow your heads. Warriors from last year 
on the alumni side. Do you think that's going to play a big factor, seeing as they've already had an Father in heaven, we thank you for this facility, together? for the blessing that it is, and the opportunity to play this game. Lord, I ask you to bless our attitudes, keep us healthy, or help us to have a good time and to honor you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And the prayer is complete. So we will do the coin flip and the tip off. This is going to be exciting tonight. Could you give us some further projections, Dean Warren, on exactly what you think is going to happen, points wise, foul wise, player wise? Um, you got to see what the refs are going to do. See, uh, first couple possessions are going to be kind of scatterbrained, but I think once they settle down and run their offense, it'll be pretty pretty normal. Um, I think we're going to see some pick and roll. We're going to see getting to the baskets, maybe taking some shots they shouldn't take. But we'll see where the coaching and what they practice comes into play. Indeed. And the Warriors game, the Alumni Warriors versus Warriors and Warriors versus staff are one of the only events that we actually hire actual referees. All right. And they are about to tip off. And it is the Alumni Warriors with the first possession. And then the current Warriors take possession back and back to the Alumni Warriors. Ava Stevenson is walking up the court. Now May challenges it, gets the ball away. Ava, Ava drops it, picks it up again. She is rolling around, gets absolutely picked by Lavanya Juma, passed over to Shelby, and I can't wait to see what's gonna happen. She's going slow, okay. they're setting her team. They're setting up their offense. She's making good passes. Let's see if they stick to what they know best in practice. They have to swing the ball around. Indeed, they are kind of standing still. Oh, the, oh wide open Soma. in the corner. Oh, she thought about going shooting back, it. She swings it back, back up top. She's slowly walking around, waiting for an opportunity. That was a nice screen. Aliyah Vanderwall jumps up and blocks the living daylights out of that. Oh, my word. And now we're looking at an inbounds pass. They still have possession. The Lady Warriors still have possession of the ball. Let's see if they can get into their offense on this possession. And we are waiting for them to pass in. And it is passed into Shelby. Again, taking her time as point guard. This is very important to take your time. Go, oh, good entry pass. Oh, once again, passing up the shot. She's passing up a good shot, hopefully for a shot that is great. Yes, one thing I have seen is they pass in and pass out a lot. Oh, now that? May shoots. Oh, she's missed the corner three. Bit off. Sophia storming up the court. Lavanya manages to tap the ball away and actually tries to claim a foul. Let's see what's going to happen with this inbound pass. Is, do you think it's the Alumni Warriors or the Lady Warriors possession? Oh, it is Alumni. It's the alu it's it Alumni possession, but now we're gonna see, once I, as you can see, there was just a travel. I don't even know if she brought her passport for that one. Oh my word, you did not. As you can see, what we talked about in the pregame, we're able to see that um, the frustrations and just a little bit of the, uh, how would you say, not playing a lot of team basketball together is showing a bit. But the nerves are starting to wear off, and let's get down to the brass tacks and play some basketball. Amen, Dion. Oh, she looks looks like Lavanya might have stepped up. Oh, there was a foul on the play. They're taking the ball out on the baseline. One thing I haven't seen yet that I oftentimes see a lot at these games is a three in the key. Oh, that is a rare call. Oh, with the lady. And oh, we got, we got ourselves a loose ball and a jump ball going on here. They are on the floor together. Oh my word, this is not a wrestling match, ladies. Let's see, we have another inbounds. Are they gonna run a play? See, so he's gonna get open. Oh, she's Shelby possession. Is open. And they're going to take it back yet again. Aliyah Vanderwall steals the ball, but it gets blocked out again. And it is oh, out, it's out, out, of out of bounds, and it's staying with the War Lady Warriors alumni. I believe this is the seventh inbound pass we've had this game without a score. So far, they haven't settled down into their typical form, so we will see what is to come in this game. Speaking of our score, I don't actually see it on the screen, so if our AV team could put that up real quick. Aliyah Vanderwall shoots. Oh, and it's a miss. Thank you very much, Alex, our AD man, for that scoreboard. And also a special thanks to Mr. Thorman for hand-developing the software that runs it. Aliyah Vanderwall goes up, jump shot. Oh, and it is a little bit off. 
What do you think about what is happening, Dean Warren? Um, I think they need to slow down a bit. Um, they're playing a little bit too fast. Um, they just need to slow down, play their game of basketball. They're making some sloppy passes. All of this can be corrected. That is extremely a travel. And I think now we should go to Trey. He has an interview on the sidelines. And as we wait for Trey, our man on the floor to get his interview in, Aliyah Vanderwell passes the ball into Mrs. Pittman. Mrs. Pittman drives up, passes to Ava. Oh! And it's a score. It's a bucket. Wait, was that a mother to daughter pass for the basket? I think that was Ava Stevenson that was passed to. And that is two points for the alumni. We have defense, they're driving into the lane. She throws it up. Oh, and she's not able it to make the shot. Hard on the backboard. Ella Pittman slowly going up the court, taking her time. Oh, throws a direct pitch. And now we have Trey Slickers, our man on the floor, with an interview. So, are you ready for tonight? I am. I'm a little bit nervous, but I'm really hyped because we have a great team, and I think we're going to do great today. Do you think you're going to win? I, I don't want to put, I don't want to try guess there, be disappointed or something. So, I think we have a good chance. I think it's going to be a good game. I think you do too. I've seen a little bit tonight, and I'm pretty impressed. Yeah, they're doing really good out there. They have really good defense, and I believe in us. Awesome. Um, any other comments? Um, no, but go Lady Warriors. Awesome. Back to you guys up on the box. All right, thank you, Trey, with the interview of Cora. Now back to the action that is on the court. We have the Lady Warriors alums. Cora makes the pass, but it is stolen by, Ju by Lavanya Juma. She's passing the ball. They're probing. And the foul, I believe, that was called on the play it is in the act of shooting, so she will be going to the line to shoot two free throws. Now, free throws are free, but an honest in basketball is one of the hardest things to do because you're at the line, and the only thing you have is you and your mind. You have no teammates to blame. If you end up missing that shot, it is all you and only you, and it is up and as you scored. That is one point for the 2023 Warriors so far. It is now a one to two game. Oh, and she sinks both of them. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a completely tied game. That is two for the 2023 Warriors and two for the alumni. Oh, another good pass. She puts it up. And the alumni score another two points. So the score is alumni four, 2023 Warriors two. She looks for a way to pass the ball and she air mails it just a little bit high. 2023 Warriors two, alumni four. Two to four, that is crazy. The alumni have scored two consecutive. She's pushing the ball, oh, and the foul. It's on the floor, there's no shot, so they should be inbounding the ball on the baseline. 2023 Lady Warriors charging is for electronic devices, not basketball. Oh, and we have a swap on the court. We have a couple starters coming out. They're going to their bench. It'll be interesting to see how their bench players play and the, the tone of the game that is changing. You can see Pastor Jeff on the sidelines imploring his team to practice what they have practiced. And of course, I feel like he's practiced this. He looks just like an NBA coach in his full suit walking up and down the sidelines, clapping and shouting. Oh, and we have ourselves a steal. Pushing Sophia the court Hall, with the pass. Up. We have a foul. That is a hard foul too. One of the worst I've seen in a long time. It's a foul, and the foul can be worth it if the player misses both of the free throws. That is true, because then you can get an easy rebound. So we are gonna see if they can sink both the free throws. We have Ava Stevenson. Last year, she was the unofficial MVP of the Warriors game, and she had over 20 points. The unofficial MVP, but official top scorer. Let's see if she can keep doing it. And it and is she good. sinks it. That is two to five. 
Alumni 5, Warriors 2. Let's see if she can put one more in the hole. Loud and clear. Yes, sir. Oh, and it rims out on the second one. The War Lady Warriors are going to push the ball. Oh, she lines up a three-pointer. Ah, and just clangs it off the rim. I believe we have an issue on the scoreboard. It is two to five, not three to four. The alumni are going to be inbounding the ball soon. And if Sophia you, passes it mm. in. Aliyah Vanderwall has possession. Taking her time. They're playing man-to-man -man defense, which is very intriguing. Man-to-man -man defense is a great defense if you're really to expound the energy. Man-to-man -man is often a street ball type play. I usually only see zone in this kind of scenario. Zone played well does run better than man-to-man, -man, but they're going to run man-to-man -to, -man to see if they can get them more tired. Um, and it's a very strong possibility. If you can see, both teams look a little bit tired out here. They are not used to playing competitive basketball. Oh, that shot had more air than a bag of Lay's potato chips. But you know why they have the air in the Lay's potato chips? Wow. That is so it doesn't, so they don't get squished, one, but also so they stay crispy. Oh, nice and crispy. Like, it looks like these nice and crispy free throws coming from Aaliyah Vanderwall, number 23. She was one of the 2019 to 2020 Lady Warriors, so she is definitely a seasoned alumni. You know what else is seasoned? The food that they have that they're selling in the commons tonight to help benefit the Worthy Student Fund. Ah, uh, yes, the Worthy Student Fund. We love to talk about it. This year, we are trying to raise $500,000 for our Worthy Student Fund, and it might seem like a lot, but it really does do a lot. And as Aaliyah Vanderwall takes her second shot, it is off just a little bit. And I'd like to note that this presentation is sponsored by The Relevant Podcast, a podcast by teens for teens coming to you very soon and also sponsored by Taco Bell in name only, all rights reserved. Yes, we actually emailed Taco Bell and got their in name sponsorship. Unfortunately, they would not allow us to paste our logo in the back. Oh, we have another missed basket. We are at the end of the first quarter. With the score, Alumni 5, 2023 Lady Warriors 2. The game is going as we thought it would. It's going to be interesting to see how Pastor Jeff implores the ladies to play basketball their way. You can notice at the Alumni Warriors, they're looking a little tired, a little frazzled, but yet they're still coming together, communicating on what they can do better. And it's beautiful how this teamwork truly brings them together. You can definitely see a lot of heavy breathing and water drinking, which is as to be expected. Now, as we look back towards the Lady Warriors of recently, they actually don't look too parched, do they? No. And now to our man on the floor, Trey Slickers, interviewing Mrs. Pittman. And as we wait for that to switch over, let's talk about some of the alumni. And Trey, go for it. Awesome. I'm here with Miss Pittman, who has so far, I think, dropped the most points on the board so far. Just one, one, two points. One shot. Two points. Yep. One field goal. So you have been my PE teacher for a very long time. Correct. Seven years. What was your main advice to us? When playing basketball, three points. That percent. The odds of making it are not great. And if you're shooting inside that three, two, two points short so take it in go for that foul so three points are not as important as layups and close uh, that's, shots. that's my philosophy drive it in and get the foul make your two and get the extra shot there's three interesting hot take with miss Pittman thank you you're welcome and thank you trace slickers now pretty soon we should be getting some surprise information from the scorebook that we can read to you how many fouls 
each players have, how many points. That will come to you shortly as they prepare for the second quarter of the game. And that will come from Trey Slickers straight to Mr. Warren's phone. I think we need to focus on what Miss Pittman said, that you got to take the high percentage shot. She was preaching the gospel down there when she's talking about the high percentage shots. Old school three-pointer. If you don't know it, your basketball terminology, the three-pointer wasn't always a thing in the league, you know? You had to get the old school three, which is driving, making the layup, getting fouled, and making that free throw at the end. I think that might be the proverbial bread and butter that they are going to put forth in this game tonight because there's not a lot of range shooters. I agree. And now we see the Lady Warriors and the alumni on the court again. And the alumni do not have possession this time. The Warriors of this year pass to Shelby. Shelby is up at the top. Emily is wide open behind her. I don't know what she's doing. Screen. Oh, but it doesn't work. Screen's the wrong direction. Shelby's going up. Passes. Oh, back to Lavanya. And it is going back to Shelby for another re-go. Yeah, their, their defense should be based upon driving to the basket. Just seeing what they have available. Um, take the easy shots. And let's take a look at the scorebook real quick. Dean Warren, can you tell us what's happening real quick? Tell us what's going on. I would be able to tell you what's going on, but uh, it's a little blurry once you zoom in on, on it. But the scorebook is not full of that much information because if you look at the score right now, it is only two to five. So the scorebook is not full of information for this very moment, but we will keep you updated. Uh, we, we, have have a we have Ava Stevenson with two. We have Miss Pittman with two. And then we also have one free throw being made. On and the Warriors side, the basket was made by Nao Ome. All right, and can you tell us on the alumni, who made that free throw? According to the books, the free throw was made by Ava Stevenson. So Ava Stevenson would have three points. Wow, that is high scoring for one person so far, seeing as it is only three to five. It is three to five. Typically, this event is a low scoring event, but anything is possible. Truly, it's going to be when one team gets tired and the other team just continues to push the ball that the score is just going to continue to climb and climb. Agreed. But right now, they're tasting colors and seeing pictures because they are just exhausted. They haven't hydrated properly. So this is what it comes down to. Can you push through those feelings? Ah, and the, and the Lady Warriors just go out and they, app, they missed another layup, but they retain possession. They're forcing the ball inside and they maintain possession. And we have a surprise appearance from Colin Glenn. Were you one of the um, alumni Warriors at all? Yes, yes I was. Uh, yeah, we lost both years pretty close my, my senior year, but I think they have a shot this year. Unless I play, then they don't have a shot. Shout out Ian Glenn, I know you're watching. Uh, I'll, I'll only play if you play, so yeah. Do you think you will be playing if Ian doesn't play? No, I, I just said that. I don't think so. What year did you play on the Warriors? Oh boy, uh, 2019 and 2020, so whatever those school years were, I played twice. Was that your senior year or did you graduate another time? Uh, I played my junior and senior year, so two different years. Perfect. Thank you, Colin, for arriving on set. And now we get back to the game. Dean Warren. And Ava on. Stevenson sinks another basket. That takes her up to five points in total, and that raises the alumni score to seven. Now a two to seven game with the alumni leading. We've never seen that before. Oh, and now we had an illegal screen. Oh, no. On the 2023 Warriors. It is a turnover. They have to just simmer down just a bit and get back to playing their fundamentals. As far as we know, the 2023 Warriors have always beat the alumni. Well, not 2023 Warriors, but the past Warriors have always beat the alumni. Oh, and, oh my word. I'm shocked by it. I believe that was. That was a two-pointer. So now it is 
two 2023 Warriors and nine for the alumni. This is looking bleak for the Warriors so far. Lavania goes up. Oh, and Lavania sinks a two-pointer just as Mr. Moody was about to say the game might be looking to be over, but she sinks it just to show that they still have the fight in them. Wonderful. And now our guy on the floor, Trey Slickers. He says one set. Oh, and the cookies have been taken from the bank as another steal has been recorded by the 2023 Warriors. Oh, she keeps stealing like that. She's going to have to send some time in jail. And now to our men on the floor, Trey Slickers. Hello, I'm here with Naya, and um, she has a sign for Cora Hall, who is not out there. Well, is she? Yes, she is. Cora Hall is number seven. Number seven. Yeah. And she's got a poster that reads, number seven on the court, but number one in my hall. Heart. Heart. Oh, Heart. sorry. Can you explain the poster, please? Cora is my best friend. Cora is my roommate. She's number one in my heart. So she's number one in your heart. Awesome. But she's number seven on the court. Yeah, but number one in my heart. How many points is she dropping tonight? As much as she can. Good answer. Back to you guys up in the booth. Thank you. And as Shelby inbounds it to Miranda, goes back to Shelby. Oh, Shelby is down. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Slickers. We will see you at halftime. Yes, sir. Oh, that is just to show. Mr. Moody, don't we have something special going on at halftime? Oh, you're right, we do. The Aerocanas Gymnastics Team, our pride of Great Lakes Enemies Academy, along with music, is going to be performing during the halftime show. Which oh, Mr. Moody, I hate to break into the coverage, but the Alumni Warriors just sank another basket. So it is now 4 to 11? Yes, sir, it is 4 to 11. Wow. But as I was saying, as our man on the floor, Trey Slickers, has said, there will be a dunk routine tonight. Hmm. Dunk, that's the one that involves a trampoline and flying through the air like the Harlem Globetrotters, correct? Yes, sir. Just like the Harlem Globetrotters. Hmm. And it is now inbounded to Mrs. Pittman, a.k.a. Ella's mom. He takes it up the sides around Shelby. There's good coverage from Cora and Shelby. It's a double team. And oh my word, who is that? Is that Ava? She is coming around the front. Gets close to the half court mark. She's very far back. Passes oh, she Pittman. just passed it a little bit too high. Oh no. And thank you to Logan Lucas for grabbing that ball and inbounding it back to the ref. And I believe Shelby will be inbounding the ball any moments now as the ref passes it into her, going to Naume. And as they walk it, slash jog it up the court, Sophia Hall is there to guard. If you can look at the, the alumni, they're playing a two, what appears to be a somewhat of a two, three zone, but also a little bit of man. Um, I don't know what the confusion is down there but so far has been pretty solid defensively. Oh, Ava has picked up the ball. She needs someone to come to the ball or else she's gonna get too many seconds in the back court. But the ball has been put into the front court and the ball was sent back to the sender. It was an amazing block. I believe by Elena Panuncia, blocking the ball from Ella. Oh, that's gotta be tough. And Mrs. Pittman inbounding the ball to Sophia Hall. Sophia looked like she was posting up for a three, but unfortunately could not get a hold of it. Mrs. Pittman with the ball again. And Sophia's out and about. Ellen Council is not able to grab the ball again. But it was knocked out of her hand, so the ball stays. Indeed. Ellen looks like she was arguing with the referee a little bit. Do you think that's a good idea? No, uh, the best idea is to respect the referee and respect their calls. If anyone wants to talk to the ref, let your coach do the talking. Agreed. Oh, oh. and the putback. Oh, and another miss. Oh, we have them going for the ball. It's a tussle. It indeed is. Ref has the ball, and let's see what happens next. I think it's safe to say they're leaving all on the court. They're playing to the best of their abilities. 
Elena Panunsi with the ball passes back to Shelby, and they are going to jog it up the court for another go at some points to make the 4-11 to game a little bit closer. 3, 2, 1. Nope, the clock stopped. The oh. ball's out of bounds. There are two seconds remaining in the second quarter, and then we will be going to halftime where we will be having a little something special. Shoot. Shoot. And that is the end of the first half. We have alumni 11, 2023 Warriors 4. This is going to be the time where the coach is going to have to have some conversations, see what needs to change, what stays the same. But if you look down at the, at the court right now, they're setting up for dunk, where they use a trampoline and they will fly through the air doing dunks that LeBron James does without a trampoline. <laughs> does he really, though, or does he just take nine steps up the court? <laughs> it's debatable in the NBA. The rules are different. But we're going to see some really awesome Mike maneuvers Jack. from our arrow counter. This is Jack. actually the first sneak peek that we've seen this school year of the arrow counters. It, it's exciting to see what they're going to perform because this is just a taste. And as they continue to mature and to grow and to get better, Microphone check. they are going to be phenomenal. And it's pretty interesting because, you know, one of our check. camera guys is, a, is, is on arrow counter. In fact, he's looking at me right now. In fact, he is the one and only Owen Kroll, and he happens to be the Arrows' captain. Mr. Kroll, would you like to say a few things to the audience about Arrows? Um, sure, I, I can say a couple things. This is just a small taste of what we've been working on. You'll see that in the halftime show. Uh, I'm sorry, you can't really see me right now. Hang on a second. <coughs> So this is a small portion of what we've been working on this year. Um, it's, it's looking to be a really great year. We have a great show for you this in between the games. Um, this is going to be really fun for the crowd. It always is at local high schools that we go to. Um, yeah, we put this together. Ladies and gentlemen, really give it up for the Aracana's dunk routine. Ever seen. But it is, for how, how long this took us, this is really good. Thank you, Mr. Kroll. And now we will look at the lads and maybe a few lasses flying through the air. We're throwing it off the backboard. Can we get a little boom shakalaka? Yes, sir, we can. This is phenomenal. We get the toss, we get the dunk. It's like they were born for this or something. They take off from just beyond half court. The ball's tossed. Mm. He gathers it with the second hand. Throws it off the backboard just a little bit too high. Between the legs, if only we had these kind of dunks during the game. If we saw these kind of dunks during the game, it'd be like the, the classic video game NBA Jam. Oh my word, you did not miss it. Personally, it's one of my favorite video games of all times. Because when you do a dunk, you get a boom shakalaka. Okay. And that was a 360 attempt. And as they truly get going with the tricks now, we will let you guys watch and listen to what is going on. And that has been Noah Moody and Dean Warren signing off for now until third quarter.
And ladies and gentlemen, that was dunk routine so far. Remember, they haven't had much time to practice this stuff so far. So that is as best they are going to do tonight, which was still phenomenal, don't you think? Don't I think? Don't I know? Because you know what I know? I would never do that. Just because I am an a I consider myself an athlete. Yeah, I but I've seen on the, the NBA halftimes when the guy jumps too high and then his whole body goes through the basket. I, I, I don't know if I have that ability. Um, I don't think, I don't think I'd fit personally. I, I, I don't think I'd fit personally either. Owen Kroll, the uh, captain of the Aracanas, has said that he has gone through that way. He says it is a lot of fun. Owen can also hide behind a telephone pole. Um, I cannot hide behind a telephone pole. <laughs> Owen is in utter disarray right now as he slumps back into his seat. And thank you, Owen, for operating our pan camera. Thank you very much. Perhaps, though, at some point in time, I will go to uh, a Warriors practice and uh, potentially throw it down just a bit. I used to go to the trampoline park, you know, Sky Zone, and, oh, and, and throw it down on those. It's a little bit different, but I, I feel like I could try. All righty, and we are about to go underway again as our man on the floor is testing the mic a bit too aggressively. Okay, perfect. <coughs> We'd like to thank Owen Kroll for running our pan camera tonight, which as you see is the one that you are seeing right now. And now we simply wait for the third quarter to be underway. I Yes. And if I could make a request of our man on the floor, we would like some more scorebook information. <laughs> were you doing a locker room interview while you were in there? Oh, man. And those of you who are confused on stream, our man, Trey Slickers, you can't hear him. We can, and we're talking to him. He's now in the locker room, I believe. He said he was going to do some interviews, but I don't know. We'll see. Put him on stream. Trey Slickers. And actually, in our program, we can see our man Trey Slickers on the court. Oh, not anymore. And you can see the crowd that is stacked up on the bleachers. I think this is a perfect time for something, Mr. Moody. And no, what do you think it is a perfect time I think for? it's a perfect time for a segue to our sponsor. And a perfect segue to... You know how we talked about things were seasoned earlier, right? Yes. And how that money went to b benefit the Worthy Student Fund. You know what else is for sale in the commons? I don't know. Must tell me, please. We got the merch. You want the Glaw hoodie and you're no longer a student, but you yet you want that hoodie because you just want to feel warm on a cold day because Michigan can get cold. And if you I've didn't heard know. those hoodies are pretty heavy. You can go and buy it. You, you want a shirt? They also have that available, and all the proceeds, once again, still go to benefit worthy student. Those funds help the students who are not able to pay the rising cost of boarding school. It helps them to be able to be a student here at Great Lakes Adventist Academy. And we love having this many students at our school, and so every purchase counts. Also, if you just want to donate online, you can go to Glaw.net, and you can donate online. You don't have to buy a shirt. You don't have to buy snacks. You can just donate if your heart is in it indeed and we have multiple occasions where you can actually donate or buy produce and i'm going to turn it over to dean warren real quick i think we're going to be turning it over to trey with the interview with the one and only mr Riker. take it trey so mr Riker, we were just at the basketball hall of fame 
Where was that? Sorry, I forgot. In Springfield, Massachusetts. Massachusetts over the Boston trip. I had the pleasure of going on that. Uh, we also did basketball interviews there for commentating. We like did. They're doing we that. Did. There is a video of somewhere. Well, somewhere there's a video of Mr. Riker doing video commentating, and it was amazing. So, what's your thoughts on the game so far? It's a defensive struggle right now. Both defenses are holding up only 15 points between the two teams. 15 points. That's a lot. I guess so. <laughs> yeah. That's seven and a half points a quarter, so. Sure. Um, who do you think is the best player right now out there? On our team or on the alumni team? Both. Ava Stevenson. <laughs> Ava? I've kind of heard rumors that she might dunk tonight. I don't know if she'll dunk, but she's very good. All right. Maybe I'll have to have an interview with her later. Yeah. Back to you guys up in the studio. All right. Thank you, Trey. I am interested to see if Ava can pull off the dunk tonight. We saw some amazing dunks at halftime, and I'm pretty confident she could dunk it with the best of them. We're picking up in the second half. Now, if you want to keep personal score counts, Ava Stevenson has seven points. Ellen Council has four points. Miss Pittman has two points. So it is a very interesting game. We are kicking it off in the third quarter. We are going to see what the game has in store for us. Let's see what pep talk Pastor Jeff gave to his ladies at halftime and see what they come out in their game plan. Let's see if it changes. We have a steal and the ball's being pushed into the up court. Oh, they stopped the dribble. Oh, and forced into a turnover. I think they just had their entire team in a place. Oh, my word. And I believe that was from downtown. And that I do believe that was a three-point shot. 7-11. Speaking of 7-11, you should go there sometime. Oh, and they are running up the court again. Layup. Oh, but it's off. Up again. Oh, and it's off again. Aaliyah now has the ball. Putting it up the court, big chuck down to Ava, put up and it's off. Mrs. Pittman with the ball again, but it is off again. Ellen Council puts up the ball, but it is off again. Ava with the ball, slamming into Naume. This is a violent game, don't you think? Oh yeah, no, they're definitely leaving it all on the court. They're not afraid to play a physical game of basketball, but it is, it is very interesting. Oh, and what happened here? What kind of a foul? Was that a foul? I think it might have been a jump ball. I am not for certain. I cannot see the ref's hands from this far up. They typically, sig when they signal a call, typically with their hand signs, you're able to tell. It's kind of like sign language except for refs. Yes. Do you think that they are doing actual jump balls or are they just doing rule of possession? Typically in high school basketball, they go to rule of possession. They do not do uh, jump balls. Typically in elementary school or certain things, they will go to a jump ball, but in this game, they're just going to go with possession. Indeed, and now as Mrs. Pittman checks in the ball, Morgan Stahl with possession, holding on to it for a little bit. Shelby kind of screaming in her face. And now Aaliyah takes the ball back, and it is up by Mrs. Pittman, but not in. Is that a... Oh, it was a foul. Nope. Yeah, yes, I, I actually believe it was. Mrs. Pittman now has two shots to send this game to 7-13 to 13 maybe. We'll see. Will it go to 13? Will it stay at 11? Time will tell. Once again, it's, it's you at the free throw line. It's you and your own mind. They're looking mighty tired right now, don't you think? As long as they didn't sit during halftime, they should be good to go. Oh, and she sinks it. That is now 7 to 12. 2023 Warriors have 7, alumni have 12. We have a substitution coming into the game. Council is out. Pittman is in. And by Pittman, that is Ella, by the way. So she is standing on the side watching her own mother make absolute buckets. Oh, and she misses Ava the free throw, the but she's able to put it back in. Oh, and that is 7-14, to 14, ladies and gentlemen. It's fundamental basketball. You saw how she boxed out the other team, got the rebound, 
and just put it in from right there. And that was an amazing block by, I believe, Morgan Stahl. Mrs. Pittman is cooking both in the kitchen and on the court tonight, don't you think? I don't think. I know. Oh, we got a, got a nice pick. The pick and roll. Ah, uh, they it couldn't is. make the basket, but it was executed beautifully with the pick and roll. Indeed, it was. I've seen many things tonight, and I believe that if a pick six like in the NFL was in foot was in basketball, there'd be about six of them tonight. Yes, they have been a little bit crazy on the turnovers, but yet the game is still relatively close. Like it can be anyone's games. You saw them, the war Lady Warriors come out and hit a three pointer, the first three pointer of the game. So the three point shot can truly change the game, but they have to maintain possession. Look at them how they're playing defense so far up. It's a very dangerous thing because they leave someone wide open underneath the basket. Yes, and you say close game, but as I look at the score, I see that it is 2023 20, Warriors at seven and the alumni have double their score and just missed an open layup. Ella with the ball again, she is going to block it away from everyone else and Mrs. Pittman is slowly walking up the field. Miranda is boxing her out like nobody's business. They're playing almost a full court defense. They're, they're not giving them the opportunity to dribble the ball, which they're applying pressure on it just to see who on the team can actually dribble. Ava Stevenson going around with the ball. And I believe that is a foul. Yes, I believe that is a foul that has just been called by one of our refs. So now we're going to see who's going to cut to the ball, who's going to cut to the basket, and see if they can get this ball inbounded and turn it into points, or whether the defense will make a stand here. And we now have 2 minutes and 45 seconds on the clock for third quarter with 7 to 14. I don't think it's looking too hot for the Warriors. Oh, we had a cut to the basket, and the alumni maintained possession somehow. I was concerned they were going to get a turnover. Oh, my word. Ava Stevenson. That is two points for the alumni. It is now 7-16. to 16. Over double the Warriors' points. Shelby jogging it up the ball. Passes to, I believe. Good pass. Oh, and it is the, the it defense. It is now out of bounds. They're pl the Lady Warriors are truly playing well but they don't have that thing, that, that fire inside of them. They, they have to see a couple shots go in, maybe drive to the basket, see something fall through the net so they can feel that confidence. Indeed, Lady Warriors have the ball. There it is. There it is. Oh Naomi is seeing the shot fall. She is their best scorer. Last year, I believe she had three to four threes and only about five to seven minutes of gameplay. She is truly their best scorer and shooter at distance. Let's see if they can keep getting her the ball. Although one thing I did see from last year's books was that she actually had the most fouls. Do you think that will be uh, reminiscent of tonight? Um, so far, she's been relatively clean with the fouls. And speaking of fouls, we had one on the opposite end of the court. Uh, they're taking it out on the baseline. Oh, and once again, they're running full court press. They're playing man-to-man -man defense, full court. They're applying a lot of pressure, which is great if they can't dribble, but if they blow by their person that they're being guarded by, it's pretty, it's pretty easy to get a line drive straight to the basket. And I believe they just smacked the ball out of bounds. They slid towards that ball like it was home base. And it's crazy because they're going all out. The bleachers are right there. They are sacrificing their body so to speak, for this game. They're playing to their best of their ability. With, in fact, some of the crowd. Oh, oh. and Miss Pittman with the steal. She takes the cookies. Can she take it to the bank? Oh, oh she cannot. She cannot finish it. Oh, no. And I believe the whistle is blown yet again. Miss Pittman turned on the proverbial burners as she was able to go for the steal, but she just couldn't finish. Oh, it is rough. Kind of like how on a grill, you can have it running for a good while, but if that propane runs out, you're kind of fizzling. Mm-hmm. You definitely fizzling. Oh, 
Let's see, what is going on? I believe one of the refs has just set down the ball on a piece of duct tape. Um, he's talking to the players, uh, he's talking to the table about the books, maybe about the score. I'm not completely sure. Maybe he's trying to see who has possession of the ball or how close they are to the bonus or extra fouls. You know, the bonus is truly the most confusing thing in basketball when it goes to one and one and who gets the ball and who shoots free throws, things of that nature. When he set the ball on the tape, it's so it doesn't touch the table, so that if there's any substance on the table, it doesn't get wet or get messed up. They launched another three-pointer, but it is not in. That's enough bricks this game to build yourself a small church. And just like that, we are at the end of the third quarter with the score 9-16. to 16. It is definitely looking bleak for the Warriors as they go to the bench. Hopefully our own coach for the Warriors, Pastor Jeff, can give them truly the Rocky Balboa style pump up. I think when it, come, when it comes to basketball and any kind of team sport, the coach can be a great motivator, but the players have to come out and play. And the, a lot, we saw there are a lot of young players on this team. And so they, just, they don't have that knowledge and wisdom just yet in basketball. But the thing is, they're maturing, they're growing, they're improving as a player. So they might not get them this year, but as they continue to grow and get better, they stand a chance. They have to hold their heads high, and they, while they might possibly lose this game, you can still lose with dignity. You can still make sure that you leave everything you have on the court and give your best. So play with that intentionality. Play with the ability that I'm going to go forth and give my best effort, and if my best effort isn't enough to get the win, I still went out and had fun. Because at the end of the day, no one here is going to the WNBA or the NBA. We're, we're playing for fun, a little bit of pride, but we'll see how uh, they tighten up that score going into the fourth quarter. Indeed, because I believe if the alumni pull this off this year, that will be the first year in the history of Great Lakes Adventist Academy that the alumni have beaten the current Warriors. I, I heard rumors that 2012, I don't know if that was the men or the women's team um, alumni won, um, but I think someone won in 2012. But we shall see. Oh, and the cookies were just taken from Stephanie. She wasn't looking, didn't have the lid on the cookie jar. They got to stay focused. There's a little bit of intentionality coming out. Let's see. And it is inbounded. To and a drive Stevenson. to the basket, and, and she sinks it. And it is now 9 Nine somebody get 18. the baking soda or is it baking powder i can't remember what do you throw on somebody when they're on fire water that would be water oh <laughs> and now to our man on the floor trey slickers requesting a shot hey guys it's been a pleasure uh commentating and interviewing people for the um Lady Warriors game. I'm going to have to sign off for the fourth quarter, but I'll see you at the Warriors game. Thank you, Mr. Slickers. I believe he has to go get ready for our Arrows halftime show, which will be coming up, I believe, it looks like in six minutes and 43 seconds. Give or take. If the fouls begin to fly, like rain droplets fall from the sky, it might take a little bit longer. But we shall see. Let's see if they can they can play some intentional offense. Pass the ball. Oh, look, beautiful cut. Ah, oh, the bounce pass was just a little bit too high. It is bouncing off these players like it is a pinball machine. Oh, and Man. we have another foul once again. So the game might just be a little bit longer due to the fact of the foul. I don't know. From what I saw, it looks like that was clean to me. I think she got a little bit of the arm on the possession. Looks like they'll, she'll be shooting two, so she's on the line. Oh, it looks like Emily will be going back for a cherry pick maybe? No. Although a cherry pick would be beneficial for them in this moment. It is a truly a offensive-minded coach who will stick another player further back for the cherry pick of this opportunity because when one of your best players can get the rebound and immediately look up the court, and just send it. It's an easy point. Oh, and she goes one for two from the line. That means it is now nine to 19, alumni leading this game. And as they go up the court, 
Let's get our scoreboard back up, please. And as Shelby is taking her time. Swing it to Emily Lucas. Passes to oh, oh, she should have made a better pass. Blocked. The cookies once again were taken. Can she finish the layup? Oh, she no, cannot she finish. she cannot. Oh, she sends a, oh, a long pass. Just a little bit too long. And ladies and gentlemen, it is 9 to 19. That is a 10 point lead for the alumni. I don't think I've ever seen this before in my time here even. Stephanie Martinez with the ball. She's going to get she's going to get that it. she's going to get it called. She did, oh, she barely got it inbounded in time. Ali they got to get it into the front court though. Emily being very aggressive. Not afraid to get a foul for the sake of the last few moments of hope in this game. Ava mm. puts it up. It is now 9 to 21. Oh, good tight defense. Oh, and she just ripped it off. She was playing a grown woman's type of basketball, but the ref said, hands off. Got a little bit too physical. Got to respect the call. I, I appreciate the tenacity and the physicality of the play, but that line Well, was yes, crossed. she's playing a grown woman's type basketball because she is a, a grown woman, as most of the alumni are. I don't believe anyone on the current Warriors is a full-fledged adult yet. Although some of the players here are. Ava Stevenson with the ball. Oh, and up. a little bit of a steal. Oh, and they've stolen back. Ellen tries to put it up, and it is in. It is now 9 to 23. And the celebration has begun. That was a very wild shot. She picked her pocket and then was able to finish. Shelby walking it up the court very carefully, trying to make sure her next few calls as captain are planned very well. Pass to Salma, put up, and oh my word, that is, oh, that's a lot of air right there. I talked to Pastor Jeff in the, uh, before the game began, a couple, a, a week back or so, and they said they didn't really work on the distance shot. They worked on driving the ball to the basket. But it seems like the, the Warriors alumni are taking away the basket intentionally. Oh, and Aliyah Vanderwall scores again. It is now 9 to 25. Wow. We have a time timeout time on the court and, and a substitution. It seems to be a little bit of con confusion. Uh, it is a timeout for the Lady Warriors. You know what a timeout is good for? You should take your some of your time out of your day and go to the Fireside Cafe which is supporting our worthy student fund that we are raising for kids who cannot completely afford to attend school, which is, as you said earlier, increasing in price, almost as if by the day. Merch, food, and all the company you could ever want. Fireside Cafe. Thank you for sponsoring this event. Also, to name our sponsors again, Relevant Podcast, a podcast by youth for youth or by Teens for Teens coming to you soon, and Taco Bell in name only. Okay. Shelby with the ball. She swings it to Lavanya. Lavanya drives, tried to get a shot off, passes it back to the paint, swings it again. Oh, you got to stay on your feet. You can't jump on every pump fake. Oh, and the alumni have the ball. Oh, and it's been taken again. Shoot the three. Shooting a three. Lines it up. Oh. oh. It was oh, a good shot. My word. It was just a little bit short. She shot a brick like she was James Harden. I know that look. We all know Ooh, that look. Oh, the pick and roll. Beautiful to Miss Pittman. Oh, and she is fouled again going to the basket. Miss Pittman is going back to the free throw line. Yes, and we now have three minutes and 18 seconds on the clock. Alumni. Up by how much is that? You're a math guy. I am not a math guy. I know it's more than 10 and it's less than 37. At least 12. Negative 11 teen. If Mr. Thorman was here, he could tell exactly how many points the difference is. Also, yet again, thank you to Mr. Thorman for writing us the software to give us the scoreboard. Mrs. Pittman puts it up and it mm. is in. That is nothing but nets. Oh man, Naume 
What is that? Skipping up the court even. I don't even know what to call that. There is a oh. kerfuffle happening on the court with Mrs. Pittman having possession. Throwing it into Ava, number 31. One oh. of our passers oh. alumni oh. is lost. Oh. Oh. Aliyah Vanderwall picks it up after it was dropped. The fumble. Oh, and Stephanie Martinez lines Puts it up. It up. Oh. oh, just a bit short. Just a bit. Let's see what happens. Shelby now has the ball. Let's see what she can do with it. Chucks it up the court to Naume. Naume takes Shoots it up it. for a three. Oh! oh! For three! It is now 12 to 27. That is insane. I told you, the long ball can bring any, it's the equalizer. She is truly a threat from deep and they're not guarding her and respecting her as such. But I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to say it. I think the nail has been set in the coffin for this one already before the game is even over. Oh! But we have back-to-back -back baskets by the Warriors. While, you, while we think the show is over, they're not going down without a fight. Someone just jammed a crowbar into this coffin. Will they be able to pry it open though? That's the question, 14 to 27. Oh, and another bad pass by the alumni. It is now out of bounds. And now we have a new man on the pan camera. Mr. Aiden Kikowski. Oh, another good pass for the long two. Oh, and she oh, sinks another shot. Word. It is 16 to 27. I think the comeback has started, but with a minute 32 seconds left, I don't know if they started the comeback just a little bit too late. I think the alumni might just want to waste time, and it is put up. Oh, you know, this could be the start of what we call in the NFL a Miami miracle. Now may charging up the court. Oh, and indeed it was a charge. Nope, it was not a charge. It would be considered a blocking foul. And so they're going to get possession on the sideline. Let's see what they do with the ball. They got to put it in. Oh, and oh. she missed the three. And oh, was... and a Ava rips the ball away. And she is wasting oh, time. Oh, and she sends it, drops back deep like Tom Brady. Uh, we've oh, made... a good pass under the basket. We've oh, made more football references than basketball references. But that's okay. Yes, it is. Oh, we are just referencing oh, another America's shot. Oh, wait, was there a foul? Oh, I don't I, know. A whistle was blown. Ava Stevenson was fouled in the act of shooting, so she's going back to the free throw line. Indeed. And this is not good for the Warriors with 46 seconds left on that clock. 16 to 27. I will attest that the score is not where they want it to be, but there was a time that they had that little run going there. If they could have just tapped into that for the whole evening, the score would be even closer and they would potentially have a better chance at winning this game. Agreed. Ava Stevenson misses the first free throw, which is not usual for her. Let's see if she can bank in the second. It appears that she is weary as anyone would be after playing how many minutes that she's been playing tonight. Oh man, she looks like she just got dumped by her boyfriend of 40 years. What? And, oh. <laughs> yeah, the shot didn't like the comment either, and that's why it didn't. Oh, it did go in. I don't think it did. I believe it bricked. Lavanya running up the court, passes Swing into it. Shelby. That's a two. Oh, man. Oh, got to get a good rebound. Oh, it they're is. fighting for it. It still ain't over yet. They're going to push the ball. Oh, and it's another steal. You know, you're supposed to pass to your own teammates. It's really much a free-for-all right now with the, with the clock counting down with under 20 seconds left. Should we start counting, do you think? I'm, oh. 15, 14, 13, 12. Oh, and the clock is stopped at 12. What did you see that happened? The ball went out of bounds, and so once the ball went out of bounds, the clock was stopped. Okay, thank you. I was busy looking at the clock. Thank you for covering that. We have a timeout for the Lady Warriors. I think they might be drawing up potentially one last play or he's just, oh, 
Oh, we got. It looks like one of the players is getting a little feisty with Pastor Jeff. Maybe a little, a little joking, a little animated activity down there. But Pastor Jeff seems to be in a good mood, does he not? He, he indeed does. I think he's just here for the game, and he is happy to be here for the game. As is, this is his first year being coach for the Lady Warriors. It's not fun when your first year is the first year that the Lady Warriors will lose. There are 12 seconds left in the game. She shoots the long three. Oh, and she it is misses it. off the bottom of the backboard. Aaliyah All they have to do is Sophia hold on to the ball. Put back to Aaliyah. Shot up. Oh, my word. It is good. It is she now. sinks it right before the buzzer. Buzzer beater, 16 to 31. And that is officially the nail in the coffin that wedged out the crowbar. But... Once again, you were able to see that little bit of a run they were able to get on. It was a final score of 16 to 31 is a lot more respectable than 31 to 9. They went on a little bit of a run if they could have just tapped into that. But next year, all of these players will be older, more mature. They will be better basketball players. So it's going to be really interesting to see what kind of talent comes back next year because a lot of these players are really young, so they have multiple years to keep coming back and playing. Indeed. And now I believe it is time for the Arrows to begin setting up for their performance. And after that, we have the long-awaited Warriors basketball game. Not Lady Warriors, Warriors. That's going to be good. What do you think about the players that are on the Warriors this year for the guys as we are slowly creeping towards that game? Um, I think head coach Dean Hill and ass assistant coach Dean Summerjeech I think they've worked together and composed a very good game plan. But as I believe it was either Mike Tyson or another famous boxer, which said, you have a plan until you get punched in the face. And I do believe that the alumni warriors are going to provide the proverbial punch to the face because they have larger people. They have taller people and more muscular people. So you've been playing against your peers who are similarly built so they're going to come out there, and if they can withstand that first physicality, I think they stand a chance at keeping the game close and respectable. Last year, I believe the lead at one point was like 40 points. I don't see the lead ballooning to a 40-point lead this year, but I could see the lead becoming 20 points this year. I can definitely see that too. And speaking of heights, this year the tallest person on the 2023 Warriors is six foot four, being Ben Bernard, I believe. And yeah. One thing I've mm -hmm. also seen is someone coming back, Kyle Vivian, standing at an astonishing seven foot one. Kyle is a tower among the trees. He is a specimen of height. Um, I think IQ level, both of their basketball IQ levels are pretty comparable. So it's going to be nice to see how Ben manages playing with someone who's so tall. Correct. And Ben being six foot four, he's actually on the court right now, setting up for Arrow's performance. Him being six foot four is tall, but when you see him next to Kyle, he looks like a toddler. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. It's really, it's truly boys playing against men. Um, Indeed, they've played, they've played together a little bit longer. They have some teamwork. They have some plays. They have some understanding, but. As you can see, Gabe Griffin is practicing his shooting already. It's going to be—it's truly going to be an interesting game. Um, I think that the alumni are going to win by 22 points. Um, I could be wrong. I'm, I'm feeling about a 22 points. I'm saying victory. 103 to 101. 103 to 101. Yeah, we're not hitting those kind yeah, of numbers. Yeah, we're putting up NBA numbers. Right now. We are not putting up those kind of numbers. But what's really interesting is there are some warriors who are in arrows. Yes. Like, how does that? how is that going to affect their performance? They're going to be very tired as arrows is mostly grunt force and lifting people. And you're lifting using your lower body, your legs. That's what you're going to have to be doing, running up and down the court. And as the court is being set up for the arrows performance, we are excited to see what they'll be able to do this year. I've been told it's one of the best performances, maybe the most sloppy, but still one of the best performances to date for being this early in the year with our new head coach, Matt Price. 
Yes, with the retirement of Coach Ted Webster. Who is Matt, here tonight, might I He add. is in attendance. Coach Price has stepped up, and it's, it's really interesting because Arrows is going to Acrofest this year at Andrews. So they have to be a little bit further ahead to where they would usually be. But at the same time, it's a new coach. They're learning different things and different materials. And so it's not going to be the most polished. But it's just going to be a taste of the potential of what they have as the season progresses. As they continue to set up, it is interesting. We were able to see that dunk happened a little bit earlier. And now we're able to see the rest of their routine. Check. Ericanas is a group that not only does gymnastics, but they use gymnastics as a means of ministry. Um, they go and they travel. In the public school system, they cannot tell people about God, but they can tell people about not doing drugs and other things that are the eight laws of health that we know that God has given for us to take care of our bodies and treat them as the temple. But when they go to churches, they're able to do a passion style play on Friday night and all of the characters play a role in the play. And every year we're able to see people come to know Jesus better because of this gymnastics program. It's a very interesting medium in which they use to show people Christ. You did very good. Are you okay? And now you're able to see they are taking the mats. There are a couple of arrows getting some chalk on to make sure that they don't have sweaty palms. Students and alumni. Are you ready? It's time for the Arrowconas! Students and alumni, are you really ready? We can't hear you. Are you ready? The Arrow Connors.
Ladies and gentlemen, the Great Lakes Adventist Academy 2023-2024 Aeroconis Gymnastics Team. What a wonderful for performance we've seen tonight. Yes, for having a performance so early off in the school year, it actually looks very impressive. Indeed, and as they carry the yes. mats off of the courts, we are getting ready for our Guy Warriors basketball game. Is that the one and only sideline reporter, Trey Slickers, informing us that he is back? And do you have any interviews, sir? Is there any chance that Pastor Jeff might be available for an interview just to see his response to the game? Mr. Slickers, Coach Webster is on the bleachers somewhere. Find that man. He's, yes, right over there. And as our man on the floor, Trey Slickers, goes to find Coach Webster. There is Pastor Jeff, literally behind Trey Slickers. He doesn't even see him. Oh, he's walking up. So see if we can get a little sideline interview here. Just All right, let's go to Pastor Jeff for this interview. Let's see uh, what he has to say about his performance. Hey, he, Pastor Jeff's good. Stand next to him. Okay, I am here with the one and only Girls Warriors Captain. Oh wait, no, sorry, not Captain. My bad, oh my hat, brain fart. Uh, coach, uh, do you have anything to say about the past game? Uh, only that they had a lot of fun and they worked hard and we'll see what happens next year. That's what I'm saying. Um, who was the best player on the field? Well, basketball was played on a court, Trey, not on a field. And I think all the girls played very well. And um, uh, now May played well. Shelby was probably the, the star player for the night. Shelby was the star player and this shows how much I know about Basketball. And likely sports in general, Trey. That's probably true. Back to you guys up on the box. Thank you very much, Trey. And you can see, I actually see right now, Alex Wangunga at number 34, also standing at, I believe, six foot five. Give or take. I'm not sure uh, what the hair is at these days to add to his height. Indeed. I also see Andy Svengross and Ben Rogers. These are some really heavy hitters for their team. Yes, um, I think the the once it comes down to is like there's chemistry. Um, we'll have to see what the starting what two starting fives they put out for both teams, and see what they have to do. Who's going to play their game of basketball? Are you going to keep pushing the ball like we saw in the girls' game, how you pushed it and it was sloppy, or are you going to play a slow, methodical form of basketball? That is correct, Dean Warren. And as we see. Ben Bernard taking a swig of water before the game. Mitchell Nelson, I believe, do you think Mitchell will be able to play with his injury? Um, I looked at the scouting report midway through, and he is still in the boot. Mitchell Nelson would be a warrior. He, in fact, did make the team, but due to an injury, he is not able to play this season. It was an injury that was suffered in the flag football season. Indeed. And I believe in a small shot we see Kyle Vivian Alex Wangunga Ben Bernard who is that is that Gabe Griffin Nathan Pierce yes and I believe in the in the field not the field in the, the crowd in the crowd we see a Korean flag come out definitely showing support for I believe Enoch, Enoch Lee, Lee who mm -hmm. is Korean in fact that's one nice thing about our school is the diversity. That is true. We talked about it this morning. Mr. Garcia talked about this morning with how many different countries and how many different states our schools come from. It's truly a beautiful thing to see this melting pot. Indeed. And I believe what we see so far, there's a, a good portion of alumni on the court right now. 
Yeah, so it's going to come down to uh, managing the subs. They have yes. a lot. They have a lot of people, but it depends on how many of those people have actually played a competitive game of basketball. And I have to say that intramurals typically is not always in a competitive game of basketball. And when was the last time they played a competitive game of basketball? Correct. Because we're not playing street ball here. We have referees. There are rules. From a talk I had with Alex Wangunga, actually yesterday night, he has not played a game of basketball. Actually, yes, he has. He's played two games of basketball since he has gotten to college. And he's been in college. This is his second year, or he's going into his third. His second year of college or third year of college? Second year of college, and he's played two basketball games. Well, he is still young, so the, ath the athletic genes and things are still there. But the older he gets, he will not be able to go from couch to dunking anymore. So we're going to have to see what happens. Could our man at the desk repeat what he just said? And right now, I believe we have 15 concurrent viewers on YouTube and 27 on Facebook. I actually think they are playing Lightning. That is crazy. I've never seen this strategy before, but why not? Y you just need to get warm. I believe, is it the alumni playing light? Yes, the, I think the, the that alumni. Is Gabe Griffin going up. And let's look at the Facebook chat right now. Yes. Indeed, do chat from wherever you're watching. We love to see your guys' feedback on the game. Tell us whatever you want. Lily Roush, go Lady Warriors. We have Connie Dan, go Lady Warriors alumni. Oh. Josiah Hill, go Shelby Bergeese. Francis Cook, go Luke Vixie. We have wonderful anthem, go Luke Vixie. We have a hello, hello there. Also another go Caleb Vixie. Thank it you seems, so much. It seems like Caleb Vixie might be the star of the show of the people watching online. It's going to be interesting to see how he performs tonight. He is a first year student at Glaude. He has not been here for a Warriors game before, but he has a high level of basketball IQ and he is a basketball player. So it's going to be interesting to see how he handles the stiffer competition. Indeed. And we also have another Go alumni. Thank you guys so much as we are trying to get this game underway. It is nice to see your guys' liking and things of that nature. I believe we have 30 people watching right now from Facebook alone. Oh, and if I look, if I, I see that just right, is that Patrick and Ian Glenn? That is crazy. Pa Ian and Patrick, both Warriors alumni. Ian is currently serving as a student missionary overseas and can't be here. And Patrick is a student at Washington Adventist University, I believe. It's amazing to see our alumni, even though they can't be there here in person, they are here online. Thank you, all of you, for turning out and for listening. For the Levitts in Collegedale, we miss you here at Great Lakes Adventist Academy. Yes, and we also have a Go Sam. I believe Sam Atwater is in the house right now. And yes, he is doing a great job in the bleachers. Oh, and they got three balls stuck. That was crazy. They got three basketballs stuck. All right, and now to our man on the floor, Trey Slickers. I believe he has an interview. With the one and only Avis Stevens. Hi. Hello. You Hi. played amazing out there. Thank you. I heard rumors that you can dunk. Are those true? Those are not true. I wish. Not true. Get out of the screen, Topher. Um, so let's see. You played well. Um, who is the best competition out on the Warrior? I mean, the Lady Warriors. I would say Shelby is really good. She has a lot of experience. Overall, the team was like really. They put up a good fight. So everyone was pretty decent. But Shelby. Number one. Awesome. 
How many points did you score again? I'm not sure. I'd have to check the books, but probably over 10, I think. Over 10 is a lot. Um, anything you guys would like to say up to sh Ava in the booth? How does it, how does it feel to have one? How does it feel to win two consecutive games on Warriors and off? Feels pretty good. Undefeated? Yes. Wow. Back to you guys. Our men on the floor, Trey Slickers, and on the court we can see Dean Hill talking to Kyle Vivian. Kyle Vivian is an absolute tower, as we mentioned before. I don't believe you can see it from this angle. Ben Bernard on the alumni side for some reason, shooting a half court and it is off by a lot. He's unsure whether that shot will come into play, but as you see in the NBA with Stephen Curry warming up from half court, he feels the need to work on his range just in case that shot comes into play. Yes. Oh, and actually, I believe I do see Sam Atwater on the court. He's not in the bleachers. He is actually number 60 on the court, standing next to, I believe, Robert Potter who is also a graduate of last year. And we have another one from Joni Rogers. We love the commentators. Reminds me of the commentators from Wipeout. Thank you very much for that. We appreciate it so much. We are still so excited for this game to be underway. And then we see Alex Wangunga on the field, and I believe that is Varick Newton practicing his skills. And Dean Warren? I believe you, it's time for you to go. Okay, ready? I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a really dramatic. Welcome! Oh, <laughs> Fans, parents, and students, thank you for and coming out tonight. And we have another commentator joining us <laughs> We're gonna start for tonight. By announcing and she will be on shortly so Dean Warren can get a little bit of a breather before he comes back in game. towards the end of the game. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it has been fun announcing this game with you. I hope you continue to stay tuned. Thank you for tuning in and watching the game. Remember, if you have the burden placed upon your heart to go on to, over to glot.net, make a donation to the Worthy Student Fund. It is We're always greatly appreciated. With and without further ado, I will open the mic for our next wonderful commentator. And Mr. Moody, who's our next commentator? Number our next commentator three, is Emily Julio Lucas, and she Lerona. recently just played in the Lady Warriors game. All right, make way for Emily Lucas. Julio and we also Lerona. have some more comments. Ian Glenn, Alex, let's see some dunks. Alex and Gabe Garcia Lanka. with Go Robert. Then we got number 60, Sam Atwater. Number 35, Gabe Griffin. Number 42, Andy Benderos. For those of you just joining, we have just switched commentators, and I'd like to Number introduce someone. Could ben you introduce Rogers. yourself real quick? I'm Emily Lucas. Number 61, I'm Emily Robert Lucas. Potter. What do you think is going to be the outcome of this game as the Number Alumni Warriors seven, march onto the court? I would love it if the new Warriors could win, but I believe the alumni will. Okay, and I believe you were just recently playing in a game of your own. How do you think that went? It's so loud. And I believe from information from okay. our man on the floor, Last Trace Lickers, we have someone playing in a hoodie and sweatpants, and I believe that is Barrick Newton. So, Emily, you were just in a game. What, what was your opinion on what happened out there? I feel like we played really well, and we did our best. Um, but we tried our best, and that was the outcome. But we used everything we learned during practice. Well, we'll do every Yeah, say something. Okay, start this a lot. And as the crowd lines up for the tunnel for the Warriors, I'm excited to see what is going to happen okay, with this game. The for alumni our boys Warriors, Warriors are already 20, 23. on the court. We got sophomore shooting guard number we will 12, let you guys watch Micah to see Ramos. What happens now? We 
We have another sophomore shooting guard, Zach Ferrano, number seven. And we have another comment saying, Let's Go, hear it for Andy Spengros, playing for the alumni. Let's hear it for the senior center number 10, Xander Bergman. I believe I just saw Julio Lorona on there as well. We haven't seen him in a while here. Yeah, it sure has been a while, hasn't it, Noah? Yes, it has. Yes. Owen, who is now on the mic. Senior I believe you had something to Mitchell say about Nelson. the Aerocon performance. Yeah, I just wanted to say, although it wasn't, uh, it wasn't stellar for for the very first performance. Then we got senior shooting guard I, number as a 15, captain, and very Ketar happy with Smart. the turnout. Uh, we're gonna get better and better as the year goes. We're going to Echo Fest this year. That's gonna be great. Um, yeah, and we're excited that Senior this is our first show. power forward number so three, congratulations. Kelly Fixie. I definitely enjoyed it. That's good. I'm glad you did. I hope you did being down there. Oh, it was it was a blast. I, oh, I love performing. It's the most fun you'll probably then ever have in your life. Then we got senior center number 23, yeah. big boy Ben if, Bernard. If you're like joining Aeroconos, um, you really should. Uh, in my opinion, I mean, Senior I may be biased, point guard, but, uh, number 11, it's, it's, Manu it's Ramos! Well, thank you so much for that little message about the arrows. Do you have anything else to say you can? Yeah. And I believe we have Manu Ramos running onto the court right now. Senior point guard, number 25, Ima Glee! Uh, I the competition agree. is stiff. Like, it is, it is tight. It's going to be a tight game. Yes, I agree. And let's put our hands together for senior captain, faces, power faces, forward, number one, Dylan faces. Sanford! Yeah, mention, um, Mitchell Nelson, who unfortunately was injured um, before he could show his performance. Assistant coach the, is uh, Dean Summerjean. He was and we got head coach and, um, Dean Hill. Let's put a hand together for our coaches. Team, actually. Uh, very unfortunate, but. He is on the court right now, shaking their hands. That is indeed unfortunate. Luckily, he will be able to be on the bench watching what goes down tonight. And as the crowd walks back into their seats, the game will begin shortly. So now that Emily is back, what? What was it like while you were out there playing? I was definitely nervous, um, but it's always fun. You're always nervous before you start playing, but once you're in the game and you're moving, all the fear goes away, and it's just pure fun and very enjoyable. Definitely. You were definitely being quite aggressive out there. Do you think that was a good tactic? Uh, probably not. I fouled a few times, and Pastor Jeff did not love that, but... But you didn't foul out, so that's all that matters. Yeah, my aunt afterwards, she was like, you know, you've got two more in your pocket. You should have used them. Maybe that's true. You guys started to make a real serious comeback towards the end of the game. Were you on the court or on the bench for that? I was on the bench for that. Um, he let me sit down for a little bit before I had to perform in the arrows. That's good. Yeah. Oh, so you were in arrows as well. Yes, I was, yeah. What was that like? Um... It was a little messy, but I think we did really well for our first performance. We did really well, yeah. I agree. It was definitely good, and I enjoyed watching it, and good job. Thank you. All right, and I believe the game is about to commence. I can see Gabe Griffin, Alex Wangunga, Kyle Vivian, and Ben Rogers on right now for the alumni, and Ben Bernard, Enoch Lee, and Manu Ramos, and Caleb Vixie right now on the court. And we have another comment. Go Caleb. Thank you so much for showing support. And you know, I wonder who's gonna get this tip off. And Kyle Vivian swats it down the court. Do you think they stand a chance against Kyle's height? Kyle's really tall. Last year they really suffered under his height. Okay, thank you so much. And down to our man on the floor, Trey Slickers. He says he has an interview. Are we in view? Back up. Yes, in view. Okay, Rat. Oh man. Dean Sites, whatever they call you. Whatever you call me. How much do you know about basketball? I know absolutely 
nothing about basketball. Except all I know is you shoot a ball or a hoop and it's supposed to go in. That's all I know. So, from a beginner's point of view, because I think we're both beginners in this sport. Yes. Who do you think is the best basketball player out here? I think the best basketball player out here has to be Enoch Lee. Enoch Lee? Enoch Lee? Enoch Lee, yes. Why? Because he is the shortest. And so with him, people underestimate short people. But in reality, he can actually run faster than all the tall people. So Enoch Lee, no, I'm just kidding. No, but I do think Enoch is a great guy, and people underestimate him, and I think he's going to ball on all these people. So you think Enoch Lee? Could I think, be the turning I don't point think, for I don't the think, Yes, I do think so. I don't think there's one person out there that's better than anyone. Anyway. Awesome. What about Kyle Vivian? Okay, he's good, obviously, and he's what nine foot five? I don't know five is crazy. But he, but he is just human, just like everyone else. And I'm spitting. He's spitting. He is just human though, and he has weaknesses just like everyone else does. He's good though. He's good. Also, watch out for him. Watch out for Kyle? Yeah, because he might knee you in the jaw. I'm just kidding. That okay, awesome. okay. Awesome. I think we should end this interview. No, 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 no. I no, need no. like a windshield no, okay. wiper for how much right. spit you right. just spit it in right. my face. All right, sorry. All right. It's 2020, so like... All right, all right, what's the next question? Uh, I think we need to get back to the game. Goodbye. Okay, thank uh, Back you. to you guys. Alumni leading to seven. Wow, the scoreboard in person seems to have something wrong with it. Because it says it is two to ten. I wonder what's going on with that. Gabe Griffin passing in the ball to Barrett Newton. Barrett kind of puts up a jumper. Oh, but it is off. Who do you think is going to be the biggest threat to the alumni this year? Uh, from experience with um, going against the guys for some practices, um, I think Ben's going to be one of the bigger threats. He's really good at defense, and his shots are really well with his layups. He can just put him right in. Okay, thank you so much. And the ball has been out, and the ref has possession of the ball and I believe Kyle Vivian will be inbounding the ball I believe the in-person scoreboard still has a problem it says two to five man I thought Caleb was tall but Kyle Vivian just towers right over him yes I believe he stands at a whopping seven foot one. Oh wow Dylan Sanford with the ball oh there's a little bit of a stumble by Enoch Lee going up the court Caleb Vixie with the ball passes to Manu Manu taking it around Alex Wangongo. Fakes it out a little bit. Gabe Griffin takes possession and runs up the court. That is a lot of steals. What do you think about that? It's definitely going back and forth quite a bit. Hopefully someone can get possession. 100%. I believe the ref has the ball again. How many is that so far? With only 4 minutes and 50 seconds on the clock for the first quarter. Enoch Lee slowly walking up the court, taking his time, making sure his teammates are where they are supposed to be. Passes to Ben. Ben going to Dylan Sanford, back to Enoch Lee. Oh, I thought he was going to shoot it right there. Mono shoots it. Oh, but it is off by just a little bit. Barrett Newton with the ball again. He's a big dude. He can take a lot of hits. Enoch kind of pushing up on Barrick a little bit. A good screen. I don't know what that was, but that was blocked. Caleb Vixie now with the ball. In fact, looking at the comments on the Facebook stream, Caleb Vixie, Vixie seems to be the fan favorite. We have at least four comments saying, Go Caleb. And I believe that is a score for the Warriors. It is now four to five. 2023 Warriors have four points. Alumni have five. What do you think about the game? I think it's really 
really close so far. Hopefully the 2023 Warriors can pull ahead. Oh, and he put up an absolute brick. That's unfortunate. Manu with the ball. Pushing up the court. Barrett right in front of him. Looking for a pass seems to be very difficult. Definitely. There's definitely good coverage here. Manu taking his time. Caleb drops the ball. I believe that might be a foul. And they finally changed the in-person scoreboard. It is actually four to four, not four to five. So I'm glad they fixed that. And I repeat, four to four with two minutes and 40 seconds left. Manu puts up a shot and it is off just a little bit. Oh, it looked like it could have been a jump ball for a second. Who do you think is the most challenging alumni to beat? We already talked about who might be the uh, worst current warrior to deal with, but who do you think the alumni would be? Uh, um, it probably be, in my opinion, Kyle Vivian. The height just towers over everybody else. It's got to be intimidating. 100%. Manu posting up with the ball and is not in, unfortunately. It seems like Varric is playing heavy point guard this game. Walking up and down the court with the ball very slowly. Playing in a hoodie and sweatpants. Gabe Griffin driving, but it hits the bottom of the backboard. What do you think about this game compared to the game you were just in recently? I mean, the scoring doesn't seem that different. It's still very close. Yeah, I feel like the alumni always do really well, and it's very intimidating as just a high school student going against these adults. But I think we do a really good job trying to keep up with them. Indeed. Some of these guys have been graduated for well over four years. Yeah, and we had Miss Pittman who... And I believe in a few minutes we have an interview with Coach. Is this Coach Webster, which we saw up here? Wonderful. Thank you so much, Trey, to our men on the floor. Dylan Sanford with the ball, putting it back to Caleb Vixie, back to Manu. They're going to walk it around. Speaking of walking around, you should get up and walk around to our Fireside Cafe, which is raising money for worthy students. And what just happened? The 2023 Warriors are now up by two points. It is six to four with 30 seconds left in the first quarter. Emily, can you tell us a little bit more about our Fireside Cafe and Worthy Student Fund? Yes, um, at the Fireside Cafe, we have pizza, uh, lots of snacks. We have some alumni t-shirts and all of the money goes to the Worthy Student Fund to help all of our students here at GLA. And can you tell us a little bit more about Worthy Student, what it does exactly? Well, about 75% of our students here at GWA have some financial help from what we call the Worthy Student Fund, which we try and bring money in through um, this year our Jean Days on Friday, where we pay a dollar to our jeans, and from the Fireside Cafe, and we have a little store that we also try and bring money in for them so that they can have some help to be able to be here at GWA. That is wonderful. And I'd also like to segue into our sponsors for tonight, which are The Relevant Podcast, a podcast by teens for teens, and Taco Bell in name only. Thank you so much to both of them for doing this. And I believe there is a timeout. Either a timeout or just time in between the quarter. There's definitely support for Caleb Vixie in the stands, as well as for Enoch with the Korean flag posted up. Definitely two posters for Enoch Lee. And I think I see your brother and parents in that picture as well. Yes. They are here to support? Yes, they're here to support us all in the game tonight, yeah. Awesome. And I believe the game is commencing yet again. Varric Newton with the ball again. As you can see Dean Hill standing watching. Oh, 
Okay. Kyle Vivian slicking his hair back. Oh, he's serious about this, isn't he? Very serious about this game. He seems to take it quite seriously. Gabe Griffin puts up the shot. Okay, and now down to our man on the floor, Trey Slickers with Coach Webster. Got it. Hey, Coach, how you doing? I am a blessed man. You're a blessed man? Yes, I am. How's the game going good tonight? I haven't been watching. You haven't? I haven't been watching the game. I enjoyed arrows. Well, it looks like we're winning. Yeah, at the moment, it doesn't look like that. It does. Um, you coached last year, right, for basketball? No, no, no. No? Or was I, that I just intramurals? Basketball. I just did the arrows and the PE classes and intramurals. Ah, my bad. Sorry. No um, so go. far, do you know the rules of basketball? Oh, yeah. Who, what's, what, what's our team doing good this year? Well, they have a lot of quickness, um, but uh, I think the officiating in both games could have been a lot better because there's a lot of... Uh, I'm usually not negative on the officiating, but it's a very physical game on both sides. So you're saying the refs are kind of flawed? No, it, it, basketball is a definitely the hardest sport to ever officiate. But when you got a lot of... If you don't cut the physicality out at the very beginning of the game, then it's going to continue. Ah, so the beginning sets the tone for the rest of the game. Yeah. But I think it's going to end up being a close game. I think so, too. It looks like we're kind of dominating, though. Uh, it's not over until the ball lady sings. Okay, with that last comment, back to you guys up in the booth. Thank you to our man on the floor, Trey Slickers, and Coach Webster, who we haven't seen in a while. Ben Bernard inbounding the ball. Zach coming up backwards. Put up, but I think that was Xander, I believe. And the ball is in the stands. They're definitely sacrificing a lot playing this close to the stands. Do you think it could possibly be dangerous? I feel like it definitely could be dangerous in some situations if they tripped over their own feet or lost control. Usually, uh, the people sitting on the bottom floor of the stands don't let them hit the um, chairs too badly. Indeed, that would hurt. And Ben Rogers going up the field. Stolen by Petar. Oh, Varick tries to steal but was not able to. We also have DJ Sheridan on Facebook says Varick is cooking. He indeed is cooking. And also, come on alumni. Yes, support for our alumni and current team. It is definitely a good game. And alumni score which make it 16 to eight, I believe. It is now an alumni at eight, Warriors at double the points. Double the points. Is that intimidating? The alumni have to be very intimidated. And they're probably getting tired out. A lot of the high schoolers have been training for this for quite a little bit now, getting ready and preparing for this game. Indeed, but now it is 16 to 10. <laughs> Kyle Vivian with a layup that looked like he didn't even have to lay it up. He kind of just shoved it in. I think he could have dunked right there. Oh, he definitely could have. All right, I believe something was called. Passes into Zach Bejarano. Oh my word, it was snuffed out. They're going up the court. Gabe Griffin with the ball. Oh, that is quite unfortunate. Zach running up the court again, fakes it out. Micah, oh my word. Both the alumni jumped over. Variks taking it slowly. Gabe Griffin put it up. Oh my word. Let's see, Micah running up the court. We've got Zach with the ball. Shooting for a three. Oh, but it is off. Alex Wangunga with the ball. Passes up to Gabe Griffin. 
charging. And it is in. That is now 18 to 14. Warriors leading against the alumni. We've definitely seen some untraditional uniforms. Do you think the old uniforms were better or worse? Um, in my opinion, I really like this year's uniforms. The red looks really um, slick. It looks really nice. The old uniforms were very nice, but I like this design better in my opinion. Thank you so much. I would also have to agree. Oh, that shot had more air than a bag of Lay's potato chips. Oh. Do you think you would have done that? I have done that in the past, yes. It does happen once in a while. <laughs> ben Rogers passing up to Gabe Griffin. Kyle Vivian with the ball in the key. Puts it up. Oh, my word. Steps back for a jump shot. And I believe that was an and one. It is now 18 to 16. If Kyle Vivian makes these two shots, it is now a tie game. Whereas they used to be up by double the points. It is almost tied now. Alumni still down. And it is in. It is now 18 to 17. Oh, but it was a one shot foul. Zach is slowly walking up the court. What do you think the benefits are to slowly walking up the court? versus doing it very quickly? I feel like um, the faster you move as a younger Warriors, you can tire the alumni out quicker. So the younger Warriors should definitely be getting down the court faster than they are right now. Agreed. And I believe that is another shot. So it is now, I believe, 18 to 19. Alumni are leading now. DJ Sheridan, W. Varick. Varick is definitely one of the heavy hitters here. And I'm wondering what just happened on the court. I was not paying attention. And I see a Petar sign. We got one for Dylan Sanford, one for Petar, a couple for Enoch, some for Caleb Vixie. We definitely have support for them out in the crowd. Who do you think you're supporting? Who? Uh, that's definitely a hard question. Um, I definitely support Dylan Sanford quite a bit. I've known him for a long time, lots of years. And I believe now we have Julio on the court. And oh, that is a swing and a miss right there. To Alex. Oh, and the layup is missed. Kyle Vivian trying to take the ball from Micah, but it is not available. And I think I see Julio on the court now. And that is the end of the second quarter. It is now halftime. Halftime of the guys game. Julio has definitely been known to put him some, up some serious three pointers. And as we look at the sidelines, you can definitely tell everyone is a bit tired out right now. On a scale of 1 to 10, how tired were you when you were playing? I wasn't too tired. I tried to preserve my energy knowing I had to perform arrows tonight as well. Okay. And now we have just in our man on the floor, Trey Slickers, with another interview. Thank you. So I'm here with Shelby. How do you say your last name? Burquist. Can you Bur say that again? Burquist. Burquist. Okay, you played amazing out there tonight. How'd you feel? Thank you. I feel good. I feel like our team put forth our best effort, and I feel good. Uh, who is your best competition? Best competition? Um, I would say Aaliyah. She has a guard. Um, she was really good. She could drive and she could penetrate, and we didn't really stop her all the time. She was really good. She, I definitely put up the most competition to us. Ava said you were the best competition for her. Ava did. Wow. That's that's impressive because I didn't think I was much. I think the girls did really good rebounding against Ava for how big she was, and I think they did really well with that. Wow. Um, how's the game going tonight? 
from the men's. Sorry. The boys? I think the boys are doing really good. They came out really strong out of the gate. I think they're going to come out really strong after halftime. Our boys, um, I mean, the alumni, they're putting up a little bit of a fight, but I think if we get if we get that lead, I think we definitely can hold them there. So this is our year, you're saying, because we've been undefeated for the last, I mean, they've been undefeated for the past, like, I don't know how many years. For sure. This is definitely our year. They, they have it. They have it in the bag. Awesome. Well, I'm going to go back up to them in the booth. So thank you so much for having this interview. Thank you. Yes, indeed. Thank you both to Trace Lickers. As you see, the alumni are running up and down the court practicing. We actually have a couple stragglers on the court right now. Gabe Griffin still practicing his shots. He's been one known to drive really well. Who do you think so far in the game, as we've seen, is going to be the biggest threat for someone from either of the teams? Like, not tallest, not fastest. Who do you think is the biggest threat? Ah, uh, um, you know, I'm not really sure. I've played against Dylan a few times um, just for fun messing around. He can make really good layups if he gets some confidence. Um, and... I don't know. That's a tough question. Okay, so you're saying Dylan Sanford, you think? Yeah. Okay, I have known him to be able to drive really well. As we can see on the bench, it is quite empty, probably getting water. And ooh, Robert Potter and Alex Wangonga on the court. They are definitely still practicing, still making sure they are 100 percent prepared for tonight and hello to the 14 people on YouTube and the 25 people on Facebook it is nice to see you guys thank you for watching and joining in thank you so much I believe that is Sophia Hall on the sands right now she played against you guys how do you think she did I think she did really well um I've missed her. She was our senior last year. Um, she played really well last year as well. She's very strong in basketball. She does really well on defense. Yes, I agree. And as the scoreboard comes back up, the game is about to be underway yet again. Oh, and we have another one. Go alumni. Good game. And hi, Andy. Yes, I'm sure Andy is very, very happy to be on the court right now playing let's see Alex Wangonga has told us that he is going to dunk Kyle Vivian and Alex have told me that they are going to dunk I don't know if I've seen anything worthy of dunking so far but we'll find out I would love to see some dunking yes that would definitely make this game more interesting than it already is not that it's not interesting okay and now, we have an interview from our man on the floor, Trey Slickers, with Alex Wangonga. Yeah, point the camera. Sorry, one sec. Technical issues. We good? And yes, we are good. Down to the end. Trey Slickers. Press the button. One sec. Oh, right here? Oh, that button. Okay, I got it. All right, sorry. Technical. So, Alex, um, I just got word that you said you're going to dunk tonight. Oh, uh, well, I mean, that's always the plan, is it not? But we'll see what things, how things are going, if that's a smart choice or not, or if I just, like, do it safe and do the layup type of thing. Right? How's your ankle doing? My ankle's actually doing just fine. This, this brace is holding up pretty well. So. So no breaking it tonight? Well, hopefully not. I'm a little worried about Manu out there, but aside from that, I think we're good. Uh, what's your thoughts on the close, close game? Close game, yeah, true. Honestly, when we're out there, it feels like like we're not making any points at all. Maybe that's just me, but like we hey, actually like came back, so it's, it's pretty good. We I think we just we have sort of like increase this momentum that we have going on here that we can we can win the game. Yeah. We have awesome. Andy Smith is going to dunk. Ask Alex if he thinks that's possible. 
Do you think Andy Spengrass is going to dunk? Uh, I mean, like, I know he's got hops and everything, but I, I doubt it. Also, I'm not going to judge him too much. Yeah. We, we have DJ Sheridan. It's Matt totally the worst game, especially when you got people like Kyle, me, on the team where it's gonna, we're going to contest him when he gets up there. So it wouldn't be the smart choice for him, but he may try. We'll see. Awesome. Thank you for this interview. And I've got a couple more that I have to do, so I'm going to ask a couple other people. Thank you. Next subject to request of the audience is Varric Newton, D1 playing in sweatpants and a sweatshirt. He's got to be overheating. 100%. I believe he did that last year as well, although I believe DJ Sheridan played with him last year in wow. the alumni game. I don't know how he does that. Me either. Varric. All right. All right, and down to our men on the floor yet again. Trey Slickers on an interview with Varric Newton. Awesome. Varric Newton, right? Yes, sir. Are you hot? Not really. Not really? You're in sweatpants, a sweatshirt, mm -hmm. and a jersey. It's huh? really thin, and these are compression pants, so they're just hugging to my skin. It's really comfortable. It's comfortable. I'm just sweating, that's it. You're just sweating. Yep. Interesting. <laughs> How's the gameplay going? Um, I need to make more shots, personally. I've been taking really stupid shots, but it's fun They're for alumni, so. It's fun? It's really close, too. It is. I don't like that. You don't like that? You don't want this to be the year? It will not be. I promise you I will have 15 by the end of the quarter. 15 by the end of the quarter? Bold claims. It's right. We have what? DJ Sheridan saying, Eric wears a hoodie because his shot is so cold. Ask him about it. I got a question from the audience. Someone just said you wear a hoodie because your shots are so cold. Is that true? Ooh. We'll find out. He says we'll find out. Awesome. Back to you guys. Thank you, Trey and Varric. I hope you enjoyed that, DJ. And our man on the floor, we also have a request for an interview with Sam Atwater. As you can see, the Warriors are having a little bit of a meeting out on the court. Lucas Summerjic sporting some nice Jordan 4 retros. I see that. Dean Hill and Mitchell Nelson walking off the court. What do you think by looking at the practices going on right now? Well, they're definitely I trying to put up shots. Um, I feel like they definitely need to focus more on the square. All right, down to our men on the floor, Trey Slickers with Sam Atwater. So I'm here with Sam Atwater. Um, what's your what's your take on the game so far? Um, been pretty good, been pretty good. They've been giving up good defense and a really good offense so far. Really good offense, I would agree. Um, what class did you graduate in? 2022. 2022? Yep. Awesome. Do you think this is the year that the Warriors win and not the alumni? I, I ain't putting the thought away yet, but we're still going to put up a fight. Okay. Um, you've had support from online, so what are you going to say to your fans? Thank you. We're going to keep trying. All right. Awesome. Real Back quick, to you guys. Ask him how much he can deadlift. Thank you so much, Trey. Yes, now I am talking. Ben wow. Rogers in the middle of the court. He can deadlift a lot. Is that a lot? Yeah, that's a lot. In my opinion, that is <laughs> that is a lot. He's definitely a juggernaut. Hopefully he can put that strength straight into the ball game. I believe the game is getting ready to commence once again. Yes, we are already on the court. Gabe Griffin with the ball. All right. Our man on the floor, Trace Lickers, has something for us which, with some young audience members. What do you want to say to the crowd uh, and viewers online? Let's go, Warriors! Yeah! Yeah! Let's go, Warriors! I think they got this game under control. 
You think they got this game? Oh, yeah. Why do you think they got it? I think they're being consistent. Oh, they're down three, four, but I think they can still pull ahead. Okay. You think so? Who's your favorite basket player? Zach Bejarano. Zach Bejarano? He's been playing well. I've played with him before. He's really good. Yeah. Um, but here's the thing. The alumni have it under their belt right now, but I think that the Warriors are going to be able to pull through that and win. You think they're going to be able to win? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I really like the Warriors, especially the way Mon has been working. He's just a little fly, and no other, no other white team spider has been able to get at him, so to speak. Yeah, I, I would agree. I think they have a really good chance of winning this game. Awesome. Thank you so much. Back to you guys. And thank you, Trace Lickers. I, I believe we have a score. I love the excitement from the kids on the floor. 100%. They are pumped about this game. It is now 21. To oh, my word. That block was insane. Gabe Griffin absolutely denied that man. Gabe Griffin with the ball again. The 2023 Warriors have 23 points now. It is now a one point game. Oh, but the alumni take it back. It is still a one point game. Alumni are up by, according to the scoreboard, two points by one point. Let's see, Enoch Lee taking his time. Manu trying to drive Oh, ben, both the Bens, the battle of the Bens are kind of struggling against each other. The alumni have 24 points now, so they are up by one against the Warriors. Let's see what's going to happen. Inbounds the ball to Caleb Vixie. Back to Manu. Let's see what Manu does with this ball. Oh, it is not in. Oh, no. It was not it. It was not it. He tried so close, but so far. Ben Bernard with the ball. Now Enoch driving around Ben with the screen puts it up. Oh, but it is off. What did you think about that dunk attempt? It was a good attempt, but... Um I feel like he should definitely try again and hopefully make it next time. Yes, hopefully he will try again. Hopefully, hopefully Kyle Vivian. That is not good. We just got word from Trace Lickers that Alex Wangunga has had his mouth injured. So he, I believe, is out right now which is not good for the alumni as but it's not his ankles we've heard rumors about how weak his ankles are what do you think about that um i think he should definitely watch out not to get crossed out because if he got an ankle injury that'd be very bad we were just told by our men on the floor he has a brace on do you think that's going to help his fragile ankles I think it'll definitely help a little bit, but he definitely still needs to be very cautious. 100%. And we have Mrs. Randall. I love hearing the comments from the two Josiahs and Judah. Thank you. And DJ Sheridan, Varick is about to drop 30 points. 30 points is a lot. We'll see if he can pull it off. Kyle Vivian with the ball, lost a little bit. Nathan Pierce now has it. Absolutely blocked by Manu. Ben Rogers with the ball. Kyle Vivian with the ball again, and it is oh, in. The alumni it. are now up. I think it is 23 the ball to 28. Down. Nice and slow. I just got word that Connor and Quinn may be doing an interview with Trey down on the floor. That is scary. I believe Connor is your brother. Yes, he's my younger brother. He goes to school in Grayling and is hopefully coming here next year. He's very excited for coming here next year. Yes. Mm -hmm. I believe it is now 25 to 27. Ben Rogers putting it up. 
No, it is not in, unfortunately. Kyle Vivian with the ball. They are double teaming him like mad. Ball goes to the ref. And as you can see, right behind Kyle, this tower is our snack shop, the Fireside Cafe, which is supporting our Worthy Student Fund. Emily, will you tell us more about our Worthy Student Fund again? Well, um, I work in the advancement this year, so we're really trying to bring in lots of money for the Worthy Student Fund. It goes to our students here at GLAW that may need a little bit of help um, affording to come here because it is very difficult to keep up on your payments and it helps out a lot. 100%. And I believe our man, Trey, who is on the floor, has another interview with, I believe, Connor and Quinn. So I'm here with Connor and, and Quinn. So you're a freshman here, right? Yes. Yes, and you don't come here. I'm in eighth grade. I'm coming next year. Awesome. What are your guys' thoughts on the game so far? That the alumni should get wrecked. The alumni should what? Get wrecked. Get wrecked. Yeah. Fighting words. What's your opinion? Um, I think that we need to win, us younger generation and the old people, they just need to like get get lost. That's exactly. kinda mean. I, I I know, but like we're better. That's I don't know about that. I know. But I cheer for both sides, but like we're gonna win. You feel me? Okay. Um I don't know what to say about that, but back up to you guys. That was Connor and Quinn. And thank you so much to you both. And I believe it is still 25 to 27. Ben Rogers with the ball. Gave it to Kyle Vivian. Standing at a whopping seven foot one makes Ben Rogers at six foot four or six foot five look small. Him walking it around makes me see, feel like he's definitely probably getting very exhausted running back and forth after the younger students here. Indeed. Dylan Sanford with a shot after getting passed to by Enoch. It is now a tie game at 27-27. Varick with a shot, and it is not in. It is just a little bit off. And I believe that was a step out as Manu tried to rebound the ball, or inbound the ball. Varick with the ball, passes to, I believe, Nathan Pierce, then to Ben Rogers. Ben steps up, but it is not gotten. Ben Bernard to Caleb Vixer to Enoch. Enoch waltzing it up the court. Let's see what he's going to do. Shoots. And it's in. The Warriors are now up by two. Wow. Enoch's doing really well, keeping his energy up. The definitely a very close game. The alumni seem to be getting very tired and exhausted. They're definitely going to need some good rest after this game. And we have some more people saying good job with the announcing and interviews. Go Warriors. And another Go Alumni. Up in the stands, I saw Lavanya during the Lady Warriors game. She played really well. She definitely tried to make some shots. She did really well keeping her energy up. I agree. I believe it's a timeout right now, and I believe the timeout has just ended. With Mr. Pittman. I believe we're gonna let the game play out for a little bit before we go to any more interviews. Varick Newton with the ball. Let's see what he does with this. To Ben Rogers. Oh. Ben Rogers loses the ball, but it is picked up. They are rolling on uh. the floor. Manu walking up with the ball. Crossing over Varick. Oh. Pass to Dylan. Taking Dylan right about loses it. Back to Manu. To Ben. Ben tries to put it up. Oh, and it is in. He makes it. It is now 30. You can see the joy on his face as he runs back to his team. They're definitely having a good time out there. 
It is now 31 to 27 with eight seconds left in the third quarter. Oh my word, to Ben Rogers. Ben shoots it, it is not in. And that is the quarter ended. The 2023 Warriors seem to be enjoying themselves, having lots of fun down on the court. The alumni seem to be getting stressed out and tired. They are now up by four points. And now to our man on the floor, Trey Slickers. I believe he has an interview with one of the Warriors players. Okay, we live? Yes. Awesome. So, I'm here with Ben Bernard. You just scored last, right? Uh, yeah, I did actually. How's it feel to be the year to maybe beat the alumni? Really good, really good, really good. We just gotta keep playing how we've been playing. We'll be fine. Keep playing how you're playing? Awesome. Get back to it. Win this year. Thank you, Trey, for that interview again. You can see uh, Dean Hill on the side drinking some water real quick as he, along with his players, are probably very tired. Yeah, it's a very long night for us here. I believe we have Sam Atwater and Robert Potter on the, uh, on the court. And we have someone saying, the class of 94 would destroy both these teams. Go Warriors. I wonder, we'd have to see. We should invite them down sometime. Barrett kind of struggling with the ball a little bit, stepping back past the three point line. Oh, taken by Xander Bergman. Petar is running up with the ball. Caleb Vixie takes it, puts Shoots. it back, puts it up. Oh, and it is he in. makes it. What a wonderful shot. They are pulling ahead. It's now 33 to 27. They came back from halftime with so much energy, the Warriors did. Yes, they did. The alumni are slowly falling behind. Right off and in. Micah puts it up again. That layup was beautiful. Right and in. what's the score now? The score now is 35 to 27. Wonderful. 2023 Warriors might have it. Gabe Griffin putting it up, but he was not able to get it up. Oh, that looked aggressive. I don't think it was a foul, however. I think it was fair play because hands were on the ball. And thank you to all 18 people on YouTube and 29 on Facebook watching right now. It is inbounded in, but then goes straight out. Out on Alex Wangunga. I believe he tipped it out trying to receive it. Oh, apparently not. Nathan Pierce inbounding the ball. Taken by Zach. Gabe Griffin not looking too happy right now. Neither is Kyle. They're definitely feeling the pressure. 100%. It is now almost a whole 10 points down with a little over six minutes left to play in the game. You think that's enough time? You never know. They could turn it right around, but I think the 2023 Warriors may have this. I believe that is Nathan Pierce with the opportunity for two free throws. The crowd is definitely getting feisty. They are definitely They're, loud up there. They are getting loud right up. Super excited. That is a foul, I believe. Kyle Vivian trying to get the two points instead of one. Let's see. Two shots for Kyle Vivian. Oh. Oh my word. And one more free 
free throw. And it is in, it is now 35 to 28. And we now have one more short interview before we get back to the game. Down to Trey Slickers on that one Okay, I'm here with Miss Fox and Miss Canada. Two energetic moms. What are your thoughts on the game so far? I'm just so glad they're getting the rebounds, that they're getting defense done, and they're making it. They are amazing. Who knew they were this impressive? I, I can't even believe it. I am, it's, it's a super close game. Who's your favorite player? Oh, oh. I have so many. Ben Bernard, Micah Ramos, yeah. Manu Ramos. Yeah, yeah. Enoch Zach, is definite. Zach is amazing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Those are some of the top ones. They're all good. Yeah. They work together as a team, that's for sure. That's amazing. Um, how was the Arrows performance? Oh, I've never seen a better performance. Okay, Winkler really? doing how many wow. flips? Oh, that was awesome. 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 I've yeah. seen him do like nine. That was oh, amazing. Wow. That was really yeah. cool. And did you, you see did the Leah too. Bass? Yeah. Wow. And Lily was flipping in the air. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. It was great. Trey, you were amazing. Yeah. I loved everyone. Everyone, everything about it. Yeah. All right. You played basketball, right? Yeah. How's... Me too, me too. You guys you both know? did? You should have asked us, but we're not alumni. Um, we're not alumni here. Where did you guys play? Andrews Academy. Trinity and South Christian. Oh, not South Christian. Trinity. Oh, Oakwood Academy, too. Oakwood Academy. Oakwood Academy as well. So you are, like, almost professional. No. No? I wouldn't say that. No? It's high school. Oh. All right. Well, thank you for this interview. Uh, back to you guys. Thank you, Trey. And that is another score for our current Warriors. That makes the score 37 to 28. Petar putting up a nice jump shot. Indeed they are. It's looking kind of bleak for the alumni right now. Yeah, they're definitely struggling to keep up. They seem to be getting very worn out. We definitely don't have the same selection of alumni that we did in previous years. There's definitely a few less options for them. Yeah. Kyle Vivian walking down with the ball. That's good. They need him. No, they cannot. Man on the floor. Zach with the ball. Puts it up. Oh, and it is off by a lot. Kyle looks like he's actually having a blast. He was smiling right there. I don't know what happened there. That makes sense, seeing the sheer size of Kyle Vivian. Oftentimes, oh my word, it is raining. And Zach Bejarano is the weatherman. One thing I've seen is that every Friday, I think it's a tradition before the game, all of the Warriors will wear full suits to school. And Caleb Vixie looked like a basketball player when he was wearing what he was wearing. I don't know how to explain it. He had tan pants and a teal suit. It was truly something to see. Definitely an unusual combination here. 100%. Yeah, he looked really good in it though. I believe He's that's out. 39 to 28 with four minutes and 37 seconds left. What do you think it's gonna be like? I believe the Warriors have this in the bag. I think they've got this. They're gonna win this year, I believe. Maybe, it'll be an opposite year for both. First year for the alumni ladies to win. First year for the guys Warriors to win. Oh, and it is absolutely swatted out of the air. Puts that up. Oh, but it is not. Oh, they just keep missing it. Oh, people on the floor getting knocked right out of the air. Oh, and that is way off. I think they just missed like four attempts. Yeah. And we had like, how many people on the floor? Did you see? Like two people were on the floor. They definitely need to slow it down a little bit and focus I think 
Ben might be fouling out. That's the first one. Okay, yes, sir. Trey Slickers with another interview. Try to keep it try to keep it short so we can get back to the game. And that is 41 to 28. 41 to 28 is crazy. Try to keep okay, the so, short. Okay, uh, so we are live. Um, what's your thoughts on the game so far? I am embarrassed. Uh, you know, maybe if I was out there, it'd be different. It'd probably be a little worse. But I'm embarrassed. They should be doing better. But I will say, the Warriors team this year, they are playing amazing. This is the best I've ever seen it. Shout out Dean Hill and Dean Summerjeech or Luca, whatever they call them. Uh, this is a great game. It's kind of embarrassing for us alumni, though. We'll get them next year, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. You'll have some of these guys. So that's true. So next year, question mark. Yes. Yeah. Thank Do you think I should try out for Warriors? Yeah. You can always try out. They might not accept you, but you can try out. Or that's, they might accept you. That's probably what will happen. Just try, Just try out. out. Sweet. Awesome. Cool. Um, oh, if you and well. Ian were here, do you think you guys would be winning? Oh, absolutely. Ian Glenn, again, if you're watching, if we were playing, we'd be winning right now. Wish you were here. Shout out Saipan, right? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Back to you guys. Thank you, Mr. Slickers. I believe as Gabe Griffin runs up with the ball. They keep Alex trying to, to put it up. up. They keep missing and missing. And they finally put one in the net. It is now 41 to 30 with three minutes and 10 seconds left. They're really losing their focus at the end of the game here. Yes, they are. Warriors are up by 11 points. They're now up by 13 points. They're doing really well getting the rebounds. Zach taking hits from Kyle. Yes, it's one thing to take a hit from your average person, but someone of that size, I don't know, seven foot one. Yeah. And now the alumni are inbounding the ball. Eric not able to hold on to it very well. He's definitely driving up hard, but it was all in vain. 2023 Warriors defense is really strong this year. They're keeping their arms up. Eric Newton with two free throws, and he makes it. It is now 43 31. outside 100% he is one of the alumni that plays basketball very often Kyle Vivian now with the ball oh my word Kyle Vivian just dunked on Kayla Vixie oh my word wow. even if the Warriors win tonight I do not think they will be able to recover from that. I just... All right, Petar, let's see what Petar can do. Passes it up to Zach. That looked like a travel to me. Oh, Come on, right Alex. Right on camera. Caught in 4K, tipping the ball out of bounds. Kayla Vixie inbounding the ball. And I believe the Warriors have scored again. It is now 47 to 36. It is looking bleak. Varick Newton with a shot and he's off. There are now three people on the floor. They are not 
are afraid of getting on their knees for this game. Truth be told. Zach going up. Caleb Vixie with an open shot, but doesn't take it. Zach with another open shot. Oh, but it is not up. Knocks him right to the floor. And I believe Petar just accidentally made a basket in the wrong side hoop. Oops, he must be getting tired. He's losing his focus. Yes. I believe that if Alex wasn't fouled, he would have dunked right there. He's been telling us he's going to. Last year in our alumni game, Kyle Vivian did not dunk, and Alex did dunk. I believe he dunked on Abel or Patrick. But this year, it seems to be opposite. Kyle has dunked, and Alex has not yet. Another free throw. On the other end, we have Luke Vixie getting super excited for his brother. Yes. Indeed, there are a lot of excited people out in the stands. It's now 47 to 36. Yeah. With how many seconds left? 40 seconds left, about. Oh, it is looking rough for the alumni. Oh, no. Oh, and it is not up from Micah. Come on, Kyle. Do something cool. He's just trying to keep control of the ball right now. Yes, he struggled a little bit. They're really struggling to put that ball up. Yeah. There are 17 seconds left in this game. It is 47 to 36. Caleb mm -hmm. Vixie is still stealing rebounds from Kyle, even though he towers over him. Yes. We have an Ian Glenn. Biggest highlight of the night is Kyle Vivian's dunk. I'll have to agree. There are now. Five seconds left in this game. And the game is over. Nail in the coffin with the score of... 47 to 36. They played really hard tonight. They are looking super pumped up right now. They're so excited. Stands are rushing down to them. I believe the entirety of the stands is now running down and jumping up. This is truly a night to behold. The first time in a long time that the Warriors have beat the alumni. This is a rare sight. The alumni look very exhausted down there. It's a very good game. Definitely entertaining to watch. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in, and I hope you enjoyed that game. Alex, should we end the stream?